as a Metro police officer is injured after being hit by a car. Now, police have just released video of the incident showing exactly what happened. We want to warn all of our viewers the video we're about to show you is graphic. Some may find it disturbing. MMPD says Officer Jerrica Gladstone identified a stolen car at a gas station on Brick Church in Avondale and chased after the suspects. Look at this video. The department says the suspects hit Gladstone with a stolen car as she attempted to put down a spike strip on Cowan Street. Police say Gladstone is being evaluated for a broken leg and the suspects have been taken into custody. We're seeing an increase in crime in nearly every precinct, except right where I'm standing here in North Nashville. If we look at West, East, Central as well, we are seeing more homicides. And of course, we had those three separate deadly shootings, killing five people since Friday, one in South Nashville, two brothers and a suspect in West Nashville, and another man shot outside of an East Nashville market on Friday. Now, when I broke down these comp stat reports, this is a this is really just a report that we get from Metro Police coming out weekly. What I can tell you is that in West Nashville, homicides are up 133% compared to this time last year. In East Nashville, they're down 38%, which is great news. South Nashville up 23%. And the Central District, which is downtown Nashville, reporting 400% more homicides this year as in that pandemic year 2020. So coming up, we are going to continue to look at these statistics, maybe what specifically they are, because these could be larceny crimes. They could also be rapes, robberies ranging across the board. But as of right now, we know homicides are up in a majority of Nashville. So we'll take it those stats and see if we can find out why. A Saturday night flight from Fort Lauderdale to Nashville is just one of many taking place across the country this holiday weekend. But an unruly passenger on Spirit Airlines turned the flying experience sour. The airline notified Metro Police of a disruptive passenger before they landed. According to the affidavit, suspect Amanda Henry punched a flight attendant and pulled the hair of another flight attendant. The affidavit goes on to describe Henry as having slurred speech and smelling of alcohol. Henry was removed from the flight for unruly behavior and police arrested her for public intoxication. While police Police say the flight crew is not wanting to press charges. The latest from Spirit says otherwise. In a statement, the airline says it'll work with authorities to ensure she is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, adding that this passenger is no longer welcome on any of our flights. Fox 17 reached out to BNA to see what protocols are in place when an incident like this happens on an incoming flight. We are waiting on a response. Mayor Cooper's office is requesting the city spend about now, $20 million of its American Rescue Plan dollars toward the affordable housing crisis. But some advocates say that number pales in comparison to what some cities are doing, some allocating upwards of $100 million toward affordable housing. An affordable housing crisis that's only expected to get worse. A report from the Nashville Mayor's Office says an estimated 65,000 households are paying more they can afford in rent. And the pandemic has only exacerbated the issue. This is a crisis and it needs a crisis response. Affordable housing advocates with the nonprofit NOAA are calling on the city to allocate more of its American Rescue Plan dollars into affordable housing. Advocate Kay Bauer says it's a one-time investment that could have a lasting impact for thousands of families. We have never had a moment like this where we have huge uh, buckets of funding that's available to cities and states across the nation. Uh, and housing is absolutely an eligible use of the funds. The mayor's office has requested city council allocate about $20 million toward affordable housing. It's a big chunk of money, but smaller than other cities like Austin and Louisville, each committing about $100 million to address homelessness and affordable housing. But compared to the extent of the crisis that we are in and compared to what other cities are doing across this nation, it's a small amount of money. City leaders say more funding is not out of the question. 20 million is their initial ask, but they can request more in the coming months, something many council members say they support. The city has several years to decide how it will allocate each dollar from its COVID relief funds.
Now, the mayor's head of housing says a $10 million investment into the city's Barnes Fund results in around 400 to 600 new units.